This is the ThinLabs TL1215. If you're in IT or you manage a fleet of computers or anything like that, I promise you this is a mini PC like you have never seen before. This one is power over Ethernet. What? Power over Ethernet? What? Yes. So remember how we took a look at some new switches from Ingenious recently that did PoE. Normally PoE is useful for an access point. You just you plug an access point into an Ethernet cable. It doesn't need extra power. The power comes from the Ethernet switch. But we also covered PoE Plus and PoE Plus Plus, which there's a certain type of PoE Plus Plus that'll go all the way up to 90 watts. What do you do with that? Well, you know, some hilarious people have done office lighting with that. I don't think office lighting is going to go to PoE Plus Plus. But something like this, it has its niche, it has its place, it's PoE. And you think, okay, it's power over Ethernet, but what about everything else? It has four USB-C ports for power delivery. Let's take a closer look. All right, so let's get this thing hooked up. I'm literally just gonna plug in Ethernet, I've got two displays here, and that's it. You see, all these videos and mini PCs that I've been doing, it's kind of transformational when we talk about Zen because at the highest end, I mean, it really is 90 watts or 100 watts, but you can get a lot done with AMD at 15, 25, 65 watts. And this configuration, while the machine will draw up to 90 watts, it can share that with peripherals, not just monitors. PoE is also fun from a system administration standpoint because you can log into the Ethernet switch and see what the power consumption of all the devices is. It's actually pretty useful in very large wireless network installations. You can log into your PoE switch, and when they say one of the access points is malfunctioning, 50% of the time you can say, okay, this, uh, this PoE port is pegged. Chances are that this access point is locked up in a tight loop. Let's just turn power off to that port and power back on. We'll restart it. If you'd use DHCP for remote imaging or anything like that, it's super useful to be able to do that because you just turn it off, turn it back on, boot from the network, re-image, done. So if you break it down, what are we looking at? Well, it's a mini PC, basically, with a power over ethernet power delivery board. In this case, we're taking 48 volts DC from the power over ethernet side at 90 watts and stepping that down to 12 volts for this particular design. Now the design could vary, you could have something that's 48 volt native, but in this case, they're taking it to good old fashioned 12 volts but the NUC doesn't use all the power. In this case, I've got not one, but two monitors hooked up. And to give you an idea of just how big these monitors are, this is a 15 inch travel laptop. It looks tiny compared to these displays. These are special displays that have a low power LED backlight, so they're not gonna use very much power each. When I'm using the kilowatt and looking at the increase in power consumption versus the, uh, the mini PC, it's like 7.5 watts per display. So our power budget here is like 15 watts for two displays. But we've got four USB-C ports. Does that mean we can go to four displays? Yes, yes it does. We can actually set up an entire monitor tree off of one of these small form factor machines. This is sort of nuts and still fit in the 90 watt power envelope. Yes, we're talking about something that is 90 watts with four displays. And it's expandable, you know, you can put an M.2 SSD in it. It's got non-soldered RAM. You have all of the same expandability options you would expect from a mini PC, except we're basically running off of a laptop processor with more expandability and more upgradability than your typical laptop. And we've got all this connectivity. And with ThinLab's extra accessories, you can go out from USB-C to provide an extra ethernet or a pass-through ethernet for something like a PoE phone. And if you manage a fleet of machines and you're sitting there thinking, it would not make sense for us to roll out 250 or 500 or 1,000 workstations with power over Ethernet. If we've got a 24-port switch, we're going to need 2.4 gigawatts of electricity in the server closet. And to that, I would say, no, that's basically correct for today. It might not be true tomorrow, but for today, that is basically true. But there are a lot of places that call for a computer that don't necessarily have an easily accessible power port. And sometimes you want a power over Ethernet computer where a traditional computer might not make sense. Think industrial control systems, HVAC, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, yes, if you're in an HVAC, obviously you're gonna have 110 or 220 uh, handy somewhere, but sometimes for a control bus and just managing like the option for power surges and everything else, power over ethernet only as your power source can make a lot of sense. 
So it's really interesting to see an innovative product like this from Thin Labs. Now in terms of performance evaluation and hiccups and things like that, I mean if you're running over power over ethernet and the switch decides to momentarily toggle the port, you're going to be in for a bad time. The machine is going to reset. And so uh, that's true of an access point, that's true of pretty much anything else. If the power over ethernet port run is long or you're not using high quality CAT6 cable, you're going to get a pretty significant voltage droop over the long run. So when the machine ramps up, you could actually bump up against the 90 watt power limit, which may induce the switch to reset, could cause the machine to reset, etc, etc. Fortunately, AMD with Zen 4 basically has us covered there because those processors are useful all the way down to about 15 watts. So with up to eight cores and 64 gigabytes of memory and four terabytes of storage in NAND flash, all of this fitting in a 30 watt power envelope before you start adding monitors really gives the PoE ethernet standard a little bit of legs when we're talking about running the entire mini computer off of power over ethernet. <laughs> Stick a hidden computer in the walls that runs over power over ethernet without running 110 volts to it? Could be a thing. And boom, there we are. Four USB-C displays. These displays are powered off of USB-C, which are powered off of power over ethernet. So power over ethernet into our mini PC, into four USB-C ports, powering all four of these monitors. The backlights are surprisingly bright. I mean, it is a bit of a stretch getting all of this done in 90 watts. It's Ryzen embedded, which is truly industrial. This is a fanless platform. I'm definitely a fan of fanless industrial machines. Actually, the thing that puts off the most heat here is our step-down DC to DC transformer. It's even hotter than the CPU. The CPU is using the case as a heat sink. The fact that I'm able to run this whole contraption off of a single CAT6 Ethernet cable, that really is something. Now overall, this is a little bit of a beta product, like I say, but this is a first and early look at a product from Thin Labs. And kind of hilariously, they call it the NUC 100. I'm pretty sure NUC is a trademark from Intel, but I didn't tell you that. And in case you're wondering, I did ask if this platform supports bi-directional USB-C power. So like, can you do a USB-C power brick as a standby power source in lieu of the power over ethernet? They didn't seem to understand the, the question or think of that use case. So it doesn't support anything like that currently. But if you would like to see something like that, like USB-C power delivery or USB-C charging as a secondary power option, then engage in the comments below. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the Thin Labs. 1215. I've got to send this back. It goes in a fancy Pelican case, but I thought this was an interesting enough thing to take a look at with certainly some niche use cases, but a power over ethernet mini computer, I had to take a look at that. All right, I'm signing out and you can find me at the level one forums.